Like when you go in that building, Victor, the the one of the biggest challenges other than not having enough space is all, all the functions go through one door. Right. So like whether I'm dropping off donations or whether I'm a battered victim, I'm going in the same door. So there's there's lots of crosstalk that happens in that building and it's you know, and talking to Carol and, and, and the staff, that's just not ideal. So that was one one thing we wanted to remedy, you know, with, with how we did this building. We're about to go through and see what will be the new shelter for Safe Place. Tell us who you are and what important role you play <laughs> in all of this right here. Um, I'm TJ McClure. I, uh, I served on the board at, House, or at Safe, Safe Place for uh, six years before I started helping them do this. Um, kind of helped them work through the early stages of it, helped them find the property. Um, you know, domestic violence is something that I wish we could make disappear, but since we can't, we want to make sure that they're equipped as, as well as possible to help those that, that go through it. Um, I've acted as the architect on the project. There's been a lot of people involved, um, not just professionally, but board members and staff. And uh, it's been, gosh, it's been, it's been a six year process, I think. So we're hopefully gonna wrap this up this year and they'll move into their new facility mid-year this year. All right, so turn it around. Tell us what we're looking at. So you're looking at what, what will be the, the, the front face of Safe Place new home. Um, this building here on the right is, is where they'll house their admin folks and their non-resident advocates, um, counselors. You know, Safe Place has a, they're known for their shelter, but they, they make a big point to get out in the community and try to address domestic violence before the shelter's in need. So their, their outreach program is just as big as their shelter program. So they're, they're very proactive in trying to get out in the community and, and not need a shelter, so to speak. So that building here will house uh, a lot of that function. The, the building on the left is a child care facility. Um, you know, currently a lot of clients have, have kiddos. So when they're on campus, you know, they, Safe Place offers um, child care, daycare needs. Um, it's not going to be a licensed daycare to begin with, but it was designed to where it could become a licensed daycare. To so there's, where there's room to make that happen. There is room to make that happen. Now we have a lot to look at. Can we go inside the one of the buildings? Absolutely. Um, so like I said, this this admin building, it's it's really the the face of safe place. So not everybody is going to get access to every every space in this building, but if you walk in and go ahead. If you walk in off the street and you're you're not here for shelter needs, this is this is where you'd come in, and you've you've got to kind of put your imagination in place because this isn't finished. So, one of the big things about the campus is obviously security with with what's going on here. So, wherever we say there's an entry, it's always access controlled. So that door we just walked through, anybody's going to be able to walk through it. But over here where Dennis is standing, we're actually standing in a little vestibule and the door there, you've got to get buzzed in. So, you know, we, 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 it's kind of a fine line between how welcoming you are versus being secure. We've been cleared to enter the building and we're going to the rest. Of Absolutely. Um, the inner workings, I guess. One of their space needs that they are desperately short on is meeting space. So this little room to our right is a small little little conference room. And then over here to the left is a much larger conference room. <coughs> I know you've you've sat in that that kind of multi-purpose room that they have at the shelter mm -hmm. now, and it's always full, <laughs> always full. So you know, we we call this the boardroom, but I, I fully believe that it's going to be used for a lot more than just board meetings. So oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's only boardroom by by name. Um, you know, in, in here, I think, you know, we'll furnish it to where it's flexible, to where it can be set up in kind of a board setting, but it can also be set up in a classroom setting. We're making all the provisions for, you know, distance learning, so to speak. They'll have the technology to, you know, Skype, Zoom, all the things that we've, we've kind of made commonplace. Um, 
like I said before, wherever you see brick, just imagine in purple. You know, purple's the color for domestic violence. So the Basically, door that Garrett's yeah. standing in is another door that's access controlled. Okay. So, you know. So we're, we're going all out with security here. Yeah. I mean, we're, I, I don't know what top of the line security looks like, but it's going to be pretty, pretty close. Built with that in mind. Yeah. This kind of admin function, like I said, it's, it's Carol and it's Leanna and staff, but it's also advocates. Um, you know, one, you know, this is probably more the, the vain architect in me, but like natural light has served so many good purposes mm -hmm. and the current facility is void of it for the most part. <laughs> well, I mean, one of the things I noticed when we first pulled up and then we started walking around is just the number of large windows. That yeah, that's have. all, that's all intentional. It's pretty simple. Down each side is primarily offices. In the middle is service spaces. So you, you kind of turn the corner here and you've got, you've got kind of a, a break bar, um, restrooms, offices on the other side as well. Back to that meeting space and, and kind of those, those non-residential clients. This is another meeting space. Here's, that, here's that, all those windows again. That, absolutely. And I mean, that's, uh, it, the windows serve another purpose too. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you're going to catch glimpses of people using the building and, and kind of the philosophy behind that is to let people know you're not alone going through this. You know, there's, there's more people here and there's a support group and, you know, everybody's here for everybody. So um, as far as the rest of this particular building that we're in, is it more of the same the further we go back or are there different aspects to the? No, it's, area? it's more of the same. It's primarily office space for, for the staff and for the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it advocates? Is that the right advocates, term? Advocates, yeah. Um, counselors. Counselors. That's the word I was looking for. Thanks. Um, advocates are going to be actually closer to, as I understand it. The shelter. The shelter. Um, I mean, when we get into this next building, there's going to be another kind of office suite. And, and those folks at office there are serving the shelter clients. So the folks here are really serving that, that non-residential group of clients. Okay. Well, then let's go ahead and go to that next phase. Uh, they'll, they'll be, this is kind of the primary shelter entry and there's, it's kind of twofold. So under that structure there at the end of the day, there's a drop off that's covered. There's a canopy that gets you to this, this doorway. And then out here, there's another one of those vestibules we talked about. So right. you're to a point here to where you hit the button and there's a video comes up and the person behind this desk can see who you are. They're going to make sure you're supposed to be where you are. So, you know, this would be kind of a, a, a little more, call it semi-public entry into the shelter. This courtyard's obviously going to be secured. A little shade structure there that's going to, when it's finished, that half of the courtyard over there is going to be playground and, and, a, and a ball court, okay. basketball hoop. Um, if you go to the shelter now, you know, they've got small versions of all that. So this is just giving them some more space. Um, the housing units are, are duplicated. There's there's six units in each building for a total of 24. Um, you can imagine these as kind of little hotel rooms. The typical stay at safe place is no more than 90 days. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. So small little living area, probably be furnished to where a couch could be folded out for large families. Um, the bedroom spaces, two beds in those. Um, one challenge Safe Place has now is there's one accessible <laughs> room. So they, they play shell games a lot and moving folks around as that need arises. These are all designed the same, so it, it removes that whole shell game. Um, back in the back there, there's you know typical kind of residential bathroom, shower, toilet, lavatories. Okay, so when you say six, there could be six units exactly like this. Yep, so in this so building, there's one, there's, that's the one, next there's one. six of those yep. over, and then there's four total units, so, so 24, 24. 24 living areas. Right. 120 and, beds, and what's really different is having their own bathroom. restrooms. I mean, right. It's, it's all communal. So we're, we're going to 120 beds from what right 66 now? 66 beds, which aren't all very useful because yeah. they're bunk beds. A lot of them are bunk beds and, and single, single rooms. So we're, yeah. we're more than doubling. Or about I think I think it's fair to say double, you know, depending on how people count. Yeah. But definitely increasing accessibility 100%.
What else have you got to show us? Back here? Let's go take a look. This corner back here is kind of what we refer to as an intake suite. You know, a lot of times when clients come in, there's bodily harm, emotional damage, obviously. So the first, you know, kind of process they go through is to go back here, they get checked in. If the police are involved, you know, there's reporting that happens, privacy is a big concern. So at the current facility, that's hard to find. They actually probably use an advocate's office for that function. So as part of this, we've dedicated, you know, a small corner to where that function can happen. Um, once you go back through here, you know, obviously you, you get badged through this door. And part of that security is also with, with the folks that are, that are housed here. Mm -hmm. So we, we designed it purposely, purposely to make those clients have to come through here every time they come through. So this is kind of the, the common space for the shelter. Um, over here, there'll be a, a, a media library and kind of a kid's hangout where if they choose to have all the electronics, that'll be where it's housed. Their games and whatnot. Yep. This big room here is going to be used for, you know, larger meetings. It's where they're going to, they'll have their meals. So it's kind of a, a dining area. It's, it's really going to be used a lot. Um, this little space out here makes an L and it's, it's part of the food service program. So it'll be where they have like a, a cereal bar and kind of where they can make a bagel in the morning and kind of self-serve, so to speak. Okay. So that was going to be my next question. Will it be, uh, like, can they prepare their own meals here or will meal, meals be, uh, served and provided? How is that going to work? I mean, the or way is that in the in the developing stages. To the some way, degree, I mean, it's self-serve, as in they'll have microwave access and refrigerator access. But for lunch and dinner, for the most part, we'll be providing a cook that okay makes dinner for nice. us. Nice, healthy meals. Yeah. All that. Yes. So we'll keep going through the shelter, and then we'll double back to the to the child care. Is that <laughs> that okay? So back through that door is going to be laundry facilities um, they are responsible for kind of taking care of themselves so imagine you know kind of residential type appliances that you use at home i think there's six six pair if i remember right so this room we've got to come up with a, a better name for it but we're calling it the boutique um, Right now in the shelter, if you go upstairs, there's a little corner of basically an attic they've carved out that houses clothing donations. And it's, it's cramped and kind of hard to get through its times. So this room is to serve that purpose. So it'll be outfitted with kind of um, merchandise shelving that you'd find and you know, pick the store. But the, the plan is to make it kind of a, a nicer, um, kind of more normal feel to go pick out clothes. Um, back on the back side there, there's a room to intake those donations so they can kind of go through them, sort them, size, gender, all those good things before they, they get in here. Okay, so we've just came out of what would be the child care uh, part of the facility. Uh, we've taken a complete tour of everything. How big of a property are we talking here? Mm, overall, the property is, what is it, nine, just under 10 acres. Okay. And uh, we've got... Space-wise, it's, it's right or just under 30,000 square feet. So comparing this new facility to where Safe Place is right now, how big of a size increase are we talking? Oh, property-wise, they're, they're probably on a quarter of a block. And facility-wise, their existing facility is right around 12,000, I believe. So more space, more room for more people to help, uh, need for more staff. When can we expect all of this to be done and ready to serve West Texas? July is the target date, so end of July. Move in in the fall, because that'll yeah. be a process. We're gonna. We're, we're, we're trying to, to make sure they understand that they don't have to move in the first day it's open. So we want them, <laughs> we want them to be familiar with everything and, and be able to serve their clients as well as they can. So 
we're kind of urging for a slow move in so they can get acclimated to their new new so building. Early midsummer. Yeah. All right. Well, TJ, thank you so much for taking us through this uh, facility, and we're looking forward to seeing it complete. And thank you for all your hard work on on this project. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.